Hey guys, welcome to Wrench to Drive. We've got a new project coming down the pike here. This is a Shelf Queen crawler chassis. And the first part is going to be these axles. These are based on my WL Toys 12428 crawler conversion project uh, with a little bit of tweaking. And I'm going to go through these uh, fairly quickly just to give you a, uh, a how to put them together and a how I was thinking that they would be used. And then, uh, yeah, you're on your own. So. The, the the notion behind this is uh, you got uh, you got a spiffy crawler body that uh, you don't run much because it turned out really really good and you don't want to destroy it so it ends up sitting on the shelf and if you're like me it sits on the shelf not on a chassis it just kind of sits there looking you know forlorn and and forgotten well how about you have a cheap chassis that you could put it on so it looks nice and uh, that is the notion behind this. Now the single most expensive thing in a chassis is the axles. So you want to be able to, run, to, to use something that's not super expensive. Now if you have a 3D printer, you can print out these axle housings, paint them up, and, uh, and you have yourself a set of super, super cheap axles that you can make a Shelf Queen chassis from. And these are really, really easy to use. All you need is some sort of drive shaft for to mount the uh, the wheels and tires on, and I have this set of uh, of cheap crawler drive shafts that I got off AliExpress. You don't need these, but I highly recommend them. Simple reason: if you use screws, um, like uh, the way it works is if if the if the if the, uh, if the drive shaft goes through, you can see that it's going to mount in the center on this this fake spool that I made up. So it's going to be nice and stiff. There's not going to be any, any room for movement. If you use a screw and you thread it in from, say, here, goes out, you put the tire on, there's a lot of load right there and it's going to be able to wobble. That's... even if it doesn't show up, it's just kind of annoying. It's going to seem really flimsy. And, uh, and when I put this together, you'll see why I recommend doing it the way I recommend doing it. Now, this setup should work with basically any drive shaft because as long as the output is five millimeters so I just want to make sure and check I'm not lying five millimeters that is very very common guys WL toys five millimeters this is a standard SCX 10 2 drive shaft five millimeters SCX 10 1 drive shaft five millimeters Traxxas I believe is the only one you're gonna have trouble but I mean Traxxas drive shafts are pretty pricey and those portal axles I don't know that they're actually gonna gonna, gonna you know uh, achieve the purpose. So what you want to go with is some dirt cheap crawler axles. And you get the front drive shafts and the back drive shafts typically in a package. Um, I've looked around a little bit. They're less than 20 bucks guys. Canadian. Canadian. US are going to be well under $20. So that's not super expensive. The set of axles is going to cost you a lot of money. And like I said, if you don't have a 3D printer, this doesn't make the most sense. If you do have a 3D printer, you can do it really cheap. It's going to take about five bucks worth of plastic. So, uh, as you can see, this differential does indeed fit in here. This is a WL Toys differential. And uh, if you want to know how to make these work mechanically, uh, tune in to uh, my next video, which will be how to make these work mechanically, because these will work if you want them to, be, to, to, to make a running crawler. It's, uh, it's a bit tricky because typically uh, to make running axles, you end up spending kind of more money than it's worth because you could buy a set of axles and, and probably be ahead. Now that's not totally true. I uh, I have a recommendation that I will pass along in that uh, in that how to make them uh, work mechanically video. Uh, but for now, we're just going to focus on putting these together for a shelf queen. All right. So what you need, you need two. If you're going to make two axles, you need two of the front half with the link mounts, two of the back half without the link mounts, and uh, excuse this one. It doesn't uh, it doesn't totally cosmetically jive with this one because I changed the link mount. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I'll post both. This one has integral link mounts. Uh, it's weak. It's weak. It broke really easy. You can see there's a bunch of hot glue on here. Um, basically, you print it lying down. These are vertical. The layer lines are a major point of weakness, and uh, this one was not durable at all. So I decided to uh, to do a different version. I, I think it looks a little spiffier and it seems to be much more durable. It should fit pretty much any links you have lying around. These are, this is a Traxxas link just to show because the Traxxas end is by far the biggest one I, I know of. And then uh, the shock mounts on the outside just like uh, most crawler axles. 
The only thing to be careful of, if you're thinking about running this as a, as a mechanically driving truck, mounting the shocks on the outside puts a lot more load on this on this post right here, guys. And my original WL Toys 128 conversion had this uh, big chunky link mount that slid over the axle and the shock mounted on top and the reason for that was that then the load is pressing down no shear forces this creates a lot of shear force in this in this in this uh, in this arm here and whether or not it's up to the task eh, my money says probably not if you're doing anything even remotely crazy all right so how do you put this together take your drive shafts you take the uh, the uh, beveled end and you insert it into the fake spool like so then you insert the other end into the fake spool like so all right notice fits perfectly I did no machining to it whatsoever you set the fake spool into the axle like so there it goes make sure it fits yep looks all good then you put the other end, half of the axle on like so all right we're looking pretty good it's starting to look like something then, if it's a rear like this is with these shafts, you slide on the uh, the outer. And the only thing you got to make sure you do is get the keyway. There's a keyway in there. You can see right up top there. This one's cut, guys, because it got stuck. Uh, it's really tight. So if you're doing this, be cautious. Do some test fitting. And uh, right there, it's hitting the axle. There we go. We got it over fits like a glove and then uh, pushed all the way in the pin is right there pulled out slightly so that we can mount a put a pin through it put a hex on put the wheel on I think it should all work nicely I'm gonna test it before I post the parts so don't panic do not panic all right this other side you'll notice no no uh, no surgery required and I didn't really do anything to this it just happens that this one fits slightly better it is very very snug guys so be careful if you get it on there and can't get it off you might have to do a little surgery and then uh, do some cosmetic fixing up after there we go it's on there nice and tight now my plan was to uh, put some screws in to hold the uh, the ends on but these are tight enough that I don't even know if you need to bother there's screw holes on the back of the axle here uh, I'll double check I'll, I'll post some information as to what size those screws are I believe they're M2 not 100% sure the, uh, the link mounts are all M3, so standard. Uh, that's a little bit different than the old WL Toys version. The, the WL Toys version was made to use as many WL Toys parts as possible, so I think all the holes were, uh, were M2.5, and you would have had to drill them out. These ones I made M3 because I just wanted these to be more standard. So if you're starting with WL Toys, some of your screws might be too small. You're probably going to need some, uh, some M3 screws. All right, and then there's a... Uh, there's a there's a pinion carrier that you print out and it goes on the end here it's really simple it just screws in place if you're doing it for purely cosmetics you can just glue it on if you want don't have to use screws all right then the uh, I'm just demonstrating here that the link mount screws on upper and lower screw as you can see and the big link does indeed work the link is then screwed on just like a standard crawler type deal these uh, these mount points, this link mount and the the upper link mounts, is set up for the standard SCX10 clone axles with four link. So four link, one, two, three, four. This this cheapo Chinese axle with the huge pumpkin is the exact same geometry lengthwise as this bad boy, this 3D printed one. And you'll notice that the pumpkin is quite a bit smaller, a little more stylish. I am thinking about doing a version of this with a uh, with a diff cover, kind of a conventional axle setup. For now, I'm not going to bother. Post in the comments if that's something you want to see. The big downside to trying to make it work with, like, say, a TRX4 diff cover or something like that is getting the geometry just right so it, it fits nicely. A little bit tricky. Uh, you know, sometimes the people on the internet are pretty loose with uh, other people's time, i.e. my time. So for now, not going to do that. Um, if I do do a cover, it'll probably be just a custom cover of some sort with a W2D logo on it. So, so that is it. That's about all there is to putting these together. And then you just uh, you install them in the uh, in the car. And everything in these cosmetic 
axles is set up for five millimeter shafts. So the drive shaft, five millimeter. The, uh, the uh, center drive shaft hole, hole, five millimeters. So basically all you got to do is have something that's in the ballpark of five millimeters to poke through that hole, attach your drive shaft through and you're good to go. Now we'll pull this apart and I'll show you how to do the front axle. Try not to wreck anything as I do it. This ends the questionable one. Yeah, it's super tight. Oh goodness, can't get it off. All right, so we'll just work on this side. It will come off, it's just super tight, guys. All right, so if you're doing the front, what you wanna do, have a look and make sure that you get the caster the right way. Notice how this is inclined forward? That's not what you want. Caster is supposed to be inclined backward to make the, uh, the car steer straighter. So you can see that if I get this on there, it's gonna be tilted backward relative to the axle, right? That's what you want. So we pop that on there. There's your uh, your outer, oops, not quite all the way on. There we go, it does fit. So there's your outer, there's your end on. Notice the exact same axle, just with a different end. Then you put the, uh, the drive shaft in, and this is the only tricky part when you, oh, there, I got it really quickly. A little bit hard to get that end in sometimes. Okay, now, I'm going to show you how to do this with a uh, with a knuckle that's got bearings in it. But what I did for this for the shelf queen project is I made the I made the knuckles bearingless, so they have the holes for the drive shaft, no holes for the bearings. And I still have to print one of those out. Haven't got to that yet, but uh, I will. I'll make sure it fits. And the outer hole is five millimeter, which is pretty standard for a drive shaft. Uh, very very common. The inner hole is same as this particular one which is pretty common I think it's 11 if I recall correctly oh, 10 okay so the big one is 10 so typically the inner is a 10 millimeter uh, inside diameter bearing the outer is a 5 millimeter inside diameter bearing bigger bearing inside smaller bearing outside uh, the WL toys is a 5 millimeter bearing on each side and there will be a WL toys specific version of this for any of the loyal WL Toys people who are running one of those. And as you can see, all right, so this is the standard knuckle for this uh, for this dirt cheap axle. And you'll notice it fits perfectly. It's on there nice. There's a little bit of extra space because this end is actually WL Toys compatible. So you'll notice if you want it to fit perfect, you're going to need to print out a little washer that I'll include. If you don't care, because it's not going to make much uh, much difference in a, in a non-driving car, then just uh, screw bottom, screw top, and you're good to go. And then you, uh, you put a pin in, you put a hex on, you put a wheel and tire on, and you're good to go. Complete axle, right? This dimension out here is right around 23 millimeters, just a hair less. So if you guys have any other knuckles that you want to work with this that I do not have access to, check your dimension. If it's more than 23 millimeters, it should work because most of this type of deal, it's gonna be very, very similar geometry. So especially for a shelf queen, more than likely you're gonna be able to get it to work. If you come across something that is uh, different enough and common enough that I might want to uh, to make a different knuckle for it. Post some uh, some info in the comment section, and uh, perhaps things will go your way. So, hopefully, that is useful information. So, 23 millimeters, and pretty much uh, a wide variety of knuckles should actually work. So, if you have existing knuckles, you can use them with this plastic axle. If you don't. Uh, the ones that you have, if they would fit, then these ones should get you where you want to be with the drive shaft. If, if you have a drive shaft, an outer drive shaft that has a different, uh, a different set of dimensions, like say 5 and 12 or something, I, I don't know if such a thing exists, but let's say it does, all you got to do is modify this one hole. Not too difficult. And you can either start with this standard uh, axial compatible one, or you can start with the WL Toys one that has a much smaller hole. There should be a relatively easy way. 
If you are really, really screwed, can't figure it out at all using something like 3D Builder in Windows, uh, if you just can't get where you need to be, post a comment and I might take pity on you. It's really not difficult to poke an extra hole into a part, guys. Uh, that amount of, uh, of uh, learning and DIYing, I hope, is not beyond anybody. Uh, like I said, most of this stuff is built for M3 screws. I will post a uh, bill of materials uh, for how you'll need to get this going. If you're doing a shelf queen, the one thing you can do is you can use pins in and glue instead of screws. Screws do, you know, they cost a few bucks when you start adding it up, guys. So if you want to put this together with pins instead, there's all kinds of ways, guys. You can use pieces of paper clip. You can use brad nails. Uh, for some of the bigger holes, the M3 holes, I think a piece of coat hanger will probably work. Um, you know, like be creative. It's not super hard. There's, you know, there's plenty of things out there that resemble pins. And all you got to do is cut pieces and then uh, a little bit of glue. And, you know, it's going to work. Uh, trust me, I've glued lots of stuff together, guys. A little bit of a uh, little bit of farting around, and, and you'll figure it out, I'm sure. Um, so, like I said, that is how this works. If you are running a non-functional axle, stay tuned. Down the road here, I will show you how to put this together functionally. And the only downside, like I said, if you want to run these axles and uh, and actually have your car driving. The link mount worries me. I don't know that it's going to hold up super well. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to run these axles on anything, guys. I kind of think probably not. Uh, but eh, maybe. They do look pretty nice. Maybe I'll put them on my, uh, my WL Toys conversion and, uh, and give them a try. Um, yeah, we'll see. Anyways, the main goal, shelf queen. So if you're looking to make a sit-on-the-shelf crawler, guys, this is how you get yourself a set of dirt cheap axles. That, uh, that do rotate. You can, uh, they're a little rough, but these will turn. And, and when you got a whole crawler on there, these will turn just fine. And that's without any grease. If you put a little grease in there, it'll probably work okay. Do a little sanding. Oh, they're really going to be smooth, guys. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that is useful. Shouldn't be super difficult. Uh, my most favorite tool when it comes to working on uh, plastic parts handy dandy moto tool. The cutting disc, uh, handy. By far the most common uh, bit that I use is these little drum sanders. Love these things. Uh, you may need to drill a few holes to get them just perfect. Um, so drill in some on a small set of bits will uh, will be handy potentially. Stay tuned. There are more parts coming. Uh, the biggest thing I'm trying to figure out is uh, chassis rails. Uh, boy. I don't know that they're going to work 3D printed, but uh, I'm taking a crack at figuring it out right now just to see. Maybe maybe it's possible to make them strong enough. The big problem is you got to beef them up, and then and then the geometry starts to get out of whack. So um, I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm not super optimistic. I think even if the ones that I have modeled up, I think even when I uh, print them out, they're not going to be very durable. Uh, based on this little uh, this link being not durable enough, I have a hard time believing my uh, my chassis rails are going to be. Uh, are going to be uh, durable enough. And then um, a lot of the other parts are based on my WL Toys 12428 crawler conversion. I'm doing some tweaking to make it more in line with uh, SCX10, just because that's kind of standard. And uh, it'll be 13, or it'll be uh, for a 313 millimeter wheelbase for the most part, but uh, this will be fairly easy to, uh, to tweak because all you got to do is uh, is use your different links and uh, and body mounts. There you go. That's what I was looking for. So all you're going to need to do is uh, is tweak the links and body mounts, and you, and you should be you should be pretty much laughing. And I suspect I'm going to include some parts that will make that doable relatively easily. So as I said, stay tuned. That is it for uh, this edition, the axle edition of uh, Shelf Queen. I will have a, uh, and like I said, another video of this for making these axles running. And then there will be more videos on the Shelf Queen parts shortly. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Wrench to Drive, where we ask the eternal question, do you drive to wrench or do you wrench to drive?